Continue with the joy and happiness of a future redemption. Chapter 31, Ba'itahinu Maldonai. Eheye le'elohim l'fol mishpachot Yisrael, behema iyuli la'am. At that time, God says, I will be God to all of Israel, and they will be my people. Right, Going back all the way to the Torah. I will be for them. They will be for me. A partnership, a covenant. God says, this people who escaped the sword found favor in the wilderness when Israel was marching homeward. There's a song that was made of this, right? They escaped from the horrors of Egypt. God was revealed a long time ago. It's something that is distant, something that didn't just happen. And that was a love that is forever, an eternal love. And therefore, God says, I will continue with, with uh, grace to you. I'm going to continue to give you my you're going to continue to to uh, to hear about this. Uh, uh, you know, I will continue to show my kindness. And I will build you up. And it's going to be a strong building. And you will have drums and you will go forth with rhythms and dancers and playing. You shall once again plant vineyards in the hills of Samaria. You will eat, you will plant, you will live, you will enjoy the fruit, you will be able to, to enjoy it. It won't be as we said in the past that you planted and somebody else ate them. And like we pointed out yesterday, this is a continuation of a prophecy, not just for that small remnant community that submitted to Nebuchadnezzar. This is for Yehuda and Yisrael, right? We're up in the Shomron. That's the territory of the kingdom of Israel. For the day is coming when the watchmen on the hills of Ephraim, what are they going to say? Let us go up to Zion, to God. And right, who are saying it? It's not just Yehuda, it's Ephraim, the other kingdom, the one that was started by Yeravam ben Nevad back in the 12th or so chapter of the book of Kings, the book of Malachim, where he put his egg, egg zahav in different places and put guards on the roads to say that nobody could go up because he was scared that people would remain with their allegiance to the kingdom of David and the God of Israel due to the temple in Jerusalem. So we're having a complete, we're going back to the good days with both of them. We're in verse 7. Because people are going to cry out in joy for Yaakov, there's going to be shouting and joy and praise and happiness that God has saved the remnant of our people. I will bring them from the Northland, right? Where did the Babylonians come up back in the first chapter of Yermiahu? There's this bubbling cauldron coming from the North. Later on, it was in the 20s that he finally revealed the name Bavel, we knew the name already, of course, but finally that he revealed it and the Babylonians and Nebuchadnezzar is on his way. The Jews will come back from the north. And everybody's going to come back from all over the earth, the blind, the lame, the child, those who are pregnant, women. Everybody's going to come back. It's going to be a huge group of people, right? doesn't matter that you you have difficulties in life. Everybody's going to come back. They will come with weeping and with compassion. I will guide them, right? They're going to be in a difficult place. But I will lead them to streams of water by a road that they will not stumble. Because I am still the Av, I am still Avinu Malkeinu, like we said during the Asarat Yemei Tshuva, the days of repentance. I am their father, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Why is Ephraim the firstborn? Because ya- Yaakov gave to Yosef the firstborn. So Ephraim, in a sense, is the is continues to be the firstborn of Bnei Yisrael. Shemu Dvar Adonai Goyim, the Hagidu Vaayim Me Merchak, the Amru Mizare Yisrael Yikapsenu. So everybody listen all over the place, even if you're far away in the islands. The God who scattered Israel, he's going to gather them back and he's going to guard them 
like a shepherd gathers his flock. Because God will ransom, will buy back Jacob and will redeem them from those who are too strong for them. Of course, this verse is said daily. It's part of the prayer of Hashkivain in the Shemona Esrei of uh, Marif said every single every single day. So, um, or said right before that, whatever, right after that. Uva'u, Urenenu, Bimarom, Sion, Vinaru, El Tuva, Donai, Al Dagan, Vial Tirosh, Val Yitzar, Vial Benet, Son, Vakar, Vaitan, Hashem, Kigan, Ravev, Lo, Sifu, Dava'o. And they'll come shouting, right? They're going to be joyous. Uh, be, and they'll have new grain and wine and oil and sheep and cattle, and their gardens will be watered and beautiful. They will never suffer again. The maidens will dance. They will be joyous and they will dance in their circles once again. And the young and the old alike will be dancing and enjoying. Everybody, it's going to be for everybody. When you're young, you're old, you're male, you're female. It doesn't matter. Everybody's going to be joyous. And again, it's one of these chapters, the opposite of what we usually hear from Yirmiyahu. He's going to turn their mourning into, jo- mourning, excuse me, into joy, their comfort and cheer will be transformed from their grief. And give their priests, right? They're going to, the, the, what the, the Kohanim are going to get from their gift is going to be great. And my people will be full. The, the, uh, the bounty, the harvest is going to be full. Rachel mevakal baneha meana linafem al baneha ki einenu. This is what God says. There's a voice that's coming out of Ramah. Exactly where is Ramah? It's not clear. Some would say it's a specific place. If you remember, there was a very important person who was from Ramah. Shmuel Hanavi was from Ramah. That's in a specific place, or is it just mean sort of, you know, it, 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 there are many places called it. But either way, what's important here is there's a bitter, wailing, bitter cry that's coming out there. It is Rachel. Our matriarch, the father, the mother, excuse me, of Yosef and Binyamin, who's crying. Ephraim, the leader of the ten tribes, again, Yerav and Ben Nevat, they've been exiled, they're gone. And Rachel refuses to receive comfort because her children are gone. Rachel, who was taken early in her life, who died young, the childbirth of her second son, she refuses to accept this, uh, to be comforted because her children are no longer there. What does God say to Rachel? Stop crying. Stop shedding tears. For your reward, you will be rewarded for your tears, for your crying, for your prayer. And what is that? That they will return from the enemy's land, the ten tribes. This is happening in our days. Right, bad Jews from all over the world are going back. Jews who were lost, uh, hidden, whatever word you want to do. There's hope for the future. Their children will return to their country, to their territory, to their borders. They won't be hidden somewhere in Babylon or in China or somewhere in Africa or wherever it's going to be. Rachel, your children will return. Shamo shamati Ephraimino Dedi Sartani Vivaserke Egalo Luman Hashiveni Vyashuva. I can hear Ephraim crying, lamenting, you hurt us, and I accept it. We're like a calf that has not been broken. So bring me back, God. You are my God. I did wrong, and now I've suffered, and now it's time to go back. I've turned back. I'm filled with remorse, right? I did tshuva. I, I understand my punishment. I strike my sigh. I'm ashamed. I'm humiliated. I bear the disgrace of my youth, the way that I acted. I was young as a person. I was young as a tribe. We were a young nation. I know what I did wrong. I'm ready to start over. I'm embarrassed by how I have been. God says, yes, Ephraim, you are dear to me. You are a child that I will spoil. And yes, I've turned against you. Uh, that's what's had to happen. But nevertheless, my heart yearns for you. I will receive you when you come back. I will receive you 
with love, with rachamim, with mercy. Hatzvi lacha tziunim, simi lacha tamunim, shiti libech la misila derech alach, shuvi betulach Yisrael, shuvi el arayich eila. Right, so place markers, place signposts, right, get the roads ready, the roads are going to be full, because the maidens of Israel, B'nai Yisrael, are going to return. Ad matait tam makin habat ha How long will you waver, rebellious daughter? Right, come back. For God has created something new on the earth. A woman courts a man, right? The woman being, right, usually uh, it's not so new in our age. doesn't seem like it's so, so new to us. But this uh, idea that the, right, it's the, the woman who is courting the man as opposed to what is classically understood. The man is, uh, is courting the, uh, the woman. So here usually, right, it's, it's, the, it's the reverse, Usually, God courting Israel, Israel's courting God. So here it's the here it's the reverse. We're in verse twenty-three, by the way. Beretz Yehuda ve'arav b'shuv yechvutem yivarech Adonai nevet sedek har hakodesh. What's going to be said? What's going to be heard in the land of of Yehuda, which is going? Yirmiyot said so many times, it's going to be desolate. It's going to be empty. There's going to be nothing there. What's going to be heard about how God has restored the fortunes of Bnei Yisrael? God has blessed. There are places, there are places of righteousness. Visitors, exactly. so the holy mm. God bless those places. So, right. Oh, so, again, yeah, I'm thinking more, of Malta. Sounds more, like into the, the, more and more it's going into the oh. um, the uh, the idea of, of this incredible return that is happening. And that's what we are, right? And that's that's mentioned here in this Pasuk, and it keeps going. And Judah, and it's all its towns will be inhabited by farmers, and they're going to have all, you know, tremendous flock. Because I will give the thirsty abundant drink. This is the second time we have this word related to a rabbah, ribaya, which means overflowing. Everything's going to be overflowing. It's going to be so great. My cup runneth over, as we'll see uh Famous word in verse uh, chapter uh, twenty three of Psalms, the whole nefesh davami lit, and satisfy all who languish. There's going to be so much. Al zo tekit soti vere ushnati arvali. At this, I woke up. This is like Yermio now saying personally. I looked about. My sleep had been pleasant to me. Yermio had so many um, prophecies of suffering, of destruction, of anguish. Here he goes and he hears a beautiful prophecy about a future redemption. He wakes up. And he's pleased, he's pleasant, he's joyous, he's in a good mood. So God says, a time is coming when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda with the seed of the people and the seed of the cattle. And the same way, what did I want? I uprooted them, I threw them out, I brought disaster to them. What's going to happen? I will be just as close. I'll be just as close to them, to not to uproot, but to root, to plant, to build for them. Everything that I did is now going to be reversed into the good. Those days, they're not going to say the parents have eaten sour grapes and the cheese. Children's teeth are blunted. But everyone will, shall die for their own sins. Whoever eats sour grapes, their teeth shall be blunted. Right? You're going to. It's not going to be any any more any longer that everybody is suffering. It's only those who are sinning are going to suffer. But most of the people won't suffer. Time is coming when I will create a new covenant with Beit Yisrael and Beit Yehuda. I'm sure you can imagine. Very popular pasuk for. Certain groups of uh, people. Not like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them out of Egypt, which they broke. Right? God says, I made this covenant and they broke it. So we need to start again. Excuse me. It's going to be a new covenant, a covenant that's going to go into their innermost. They're going to feel it in their kishkas. Uh, I will be their God, and they will be my people. 
And now you're not going to need me anymore. You're not going to have any teachers. You're not going to have anybody say, listen to God, do what God says. All of them will know me. Knowledge, intimacy, they'll be close to God. From their youth to their old age, everybody's going to know God. Everybody's going to be close to God. And God says, I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sins no more. It's right after Yom Kippur. We can forget our iniquities. Leave it behind. There's a new world. There's new hope. There's a new chance. This Brit Chadasha. This is what God says. The God who established the sun for the day and the moon and the stars for the night. God who makes the waves stir around the sea. That is, that is the God, the Elohei Tzvaot. If I know these laws, which I can, God says, I created them. I'm the one who stretched out the earth. Then I can also take Israel from those nations that they are, where they were spread out, where they are lost, and bring them back. If the heavens can be measured and the earth below can be fathomed, only then would I reject all of Israel, right? It can't be done. Nobody can understand my power. God's saying nobody truly knows me, understands me, understands my ways, understands my power. So therefore, you can understand I can do whatever I want. A time is coming when the city will be rebuilt from the tower of Hananel to the corner gate. The measuring line will go out all the way to Garev and turns towards Goa. And the entire valley of corpses, right? The Gay Ben Hinnom is the place outside Yerushalayim, the valley where, where uh, the, talked about earlier in this book, where uh, people would bring, give their children over, kill their children, have them go through the fires for idolatry. So those places which corpses and ashes in the fields all the way to, to the Wadi of Kidron, they will all be holy to God. They shall never again be uprooted and overthrown. They won't anymore be places of idolatry. And that's uh, different places. You could say understand it as being places of idolatry, but it's also the place where... Um, According to some, that was where Sancheirev and his armies, um, that's where they were encamped before their uh, miraculous uh, destruction during the days of Chizkiyo. And of course, and that's where the chapter ends. And, and if we just think about that for a second, if it is the Sancheirev idea, part of the whole question that's happening during the time of Yermio, a couple of chapters ago when we had this other Navi, uh, Hananya was it, who shows up and all the people are saying everything will be okay. They say, it's going to be like the days of Sancheirev. There's going to be a miracle. The same way he was defeated and ran away, so too that's what's going to happen in our generation. You know, we saw an earlier chapter, was chapter 21 or 22 or so, where uh, Sidkyo sends messengers to Yermio asking him to come and to pray for him like was done in those days. Yermio says, is saying here eventually, yes. Just like the days of Sancheirev, there was a turnover, there was a transformation, and Israel was remained alive. That's going to happen, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen in our time. In our time, we need to submit. And part of the reason you should submit, part of the reason you should give in to the king of Babylon, accept your punishment, because if you do, eventually, we will return. And it's going to be a return that's going to be greater. As he's alluded to in the last chapter and earlier in the book, uh, a return that ultimately we're not going to think of the God who took us out of Israel, out of Egypt. We're not going to say Zeher Litziat Mitzrayim so often, but we're going to talk about the God who returned us from the north, the God who returned our people from where they were scattered all over the world back to a rebuilt Jerusalem.